Life here began out there. This is the opening line of the sacred texts, the last stories of a time before the Twelve Colonies. The planet Kobol, origin of humanity and a paradise where the gods and humankind lived in peace. These gods were known as the Lords of Kobol, their worship becoming the primary religion of the colonies. But who were they and what happened to them? 4,000 years before the events of Battlestar Galactica, a tribe of colonists left Kobol to found their own home. They named it Earth. These colonists were Cylons, a fact unrecorded in the scrolls. Over time they evolved into humanoid forms even to the point of procreation. The very fact that this crucial detail was lost goes to show how unreliable legend and myth can be. The Cylons themselves acknowledged that the Lords of Kobol most likely existed, but even they, with their more methodical eye, cannot fathom exactly what they were. 3,600 years before the events of the show, Pythia, an oracle, wrote her prophecies, including a description of an exodus millennia from her time, led by a dying leader who could be identified by a victory with the help of twelve snakes. President Laura Roslin, dying of cancer, played a role in the fleet's first true victory against the Cylons. The fighters used in the attack are called Vipers. It may be coincidence, and 3,600 years is a long time for a prophecy to come true. But if it wasn't, is this proof of a greater power at work in the time of Kobol, and perhaps powers that still work to this day? 2,000 years before the Second Cylon War, Kobol suffered the Great Blaze, which engulfed its paradise in destruction and the planet was abandoned. It seems the Lords of Kobol may have stayed behind alongside the leaders of the remaining twelve tribes who were entombed on Kobol. The twelve colonies were named in honour of those leaders. The Lords of Kobol became the pantheon worshipped by the colonies, and the real world inspiration for them came from the expansive mythology of the Greek and Roman gods. We know of eleven identified Lords of Kobol, and they are Zeus, the first Lord of Kobol, an all-father of many other gods and most powerful, respected, and terrible. Also called Jupiter, his domain was the sky and lightning his weapon of choice. The eye of Jupiter was said to be a marker to Earth, and in fact turned out to be a supernova star of the Algae planet. In Greek mythology, the sun, while charioted across the sky by Helios, was sometimes regarded as the eye of Zeus for its brilliance. His position in the pantheon lines up with the Kobol representation, however his veneration seems to downplay the more heinous acts of this mythos present in the real Greek telling. But as Gaius Baltar points out, these elements are still there, including him taking advantage of other female deities and birthing out of his forehead. As weird as this sounds, in Greek legend, Zeus suffered a headache so intense that he had his crown split with an axe, the Labrius, to relieve the pain, and much to everyone's surprise, out popped a fully formed, armed and armoured Athena. Zeus killed his father, Cronus, when he learned that Cronus was going to consume all of his children to rule eternal. However, Zeus also created a great flood that crashed across the lands of mankind washing away the unworthy before rebuilding human civilization. There are allusions to a great flood in Battlestar, so this may be a reflection of this event. Speaking of Athena, goddess of wisdom, also called Minerva, she oversaw crafting and elements of warfare. She is often seen wielding a spear, and in modern day, she is used to represent freedom and democracy. Athena was the guardian deity of Athens and responsible for turning the weaver Arachne into the first spider, so you arachnophobes have her to thank for that. Other symbols of her influence include the owl. In Kobol legend, Athena threw herself from the cliff on the departure of the human exodus from Kobol, in grief. Where she landed became known as the Gates of Hera, who witnessed her demise. Hera, meanwhile, was the wife of Zeus, called Juno too. She was the goddess of women, family, maternity, marriage, and similar elements. However, many of her ancient Greek tales concern her attempting to kill the bastard children of Zeus, or spite those who have dishonoured her. She is often depicted as serene and calm, but a terrible force of vengeance against those who she deems in the wrong. Poseidon is the god of the seas and Zeus's brother, called Neptune. His sphere of influence in the Greek pantheon also includes steeds and earthquakes. 
Depending on where you lived, Poseidon could have a more prevalent following than Zeus, and his blessing was often sought for journeys across the ocean. This reflects the level of power and influence he wielded, second only to his brother. He fathered the first king of Atlantis, Atlas, and Triton. Interestingly and unsurprisingly enough, I guess, Poseidon was also prayed to by pilots and spacefaring personnel, suggesting that his domain may have expanded to include space travel. Let's move to another member of Zeus's family, his twin children, starting with Apollo. He was the god of healing and hunting, the latter of which was a sphere he shared with his twin sister Artemis. He was also considered the god of light and all its brilliant connotations, goodness and holiness. He was often depicted wielding a bow, and Apollo was also credited as the guardian of flocks and colonists. Seriously, exodus of life was said to be conducted under his view. It's by no chance that Leodama's call sign is Apollo. In Greek culture, Apollo was considered the archetypal hero and depicted as such. Strong features, athletic physique, youthful and clean shaven. We see that these qualities are reflected in the moral viper pilot. The arrow of Apollo was another artifact supposedly from Kobol and would act as a key to the tomb of Athena. The twin sister of Apollo, Artemis, was known to the Romans as Diana. As mentioned, she was the goddess of the hunt the wilds and the mountains. She was a bit of a rebel among the gods, and she looked out for women who prayed to her. She too wielded a bow, and in Greek lore it was forged by a cyclops and given as a gift by Zeus as one of her ten wishes. She also wished to be able to wear practical clothing to allow her to hunt effectively, and to share the title of Lightbringer with her brother. She also helped alleviate the pain of childbirth. Her life was marred by tragedy, however, as in some stories, it is by accident she kills her love, the hunter Orion, while on the sport with her partner. I doubt it's a coincidence that there are similarities between the Lords of Kobol and certain characters of the Battlestar story. Speaking of love, Aphrodite, known to some as Venus, was the goddess of this aspect – love, sexuality and all things of beauty. In Greek lore, she was prayed to for success in these pursuits and rewarded her followers while punishing those who disrespected her. She was born from the oceans and her day of celebration was known as Aphrodisia. I have no idea how that day was celebrated, probably by doing something wholesome and constructive. Ares, god of war, known as Mars. Not this guy. Along the destruction and desolation that war caused, Ares was also responsible for the glory, the honour and valour bestowed on those who prayed to him. People would often seek his favour for success in campaigns and battles, and the Taurons of the Twelve Colonies placed a strong emphasis on him. In Greek mythos, he loved Harmonia, sometimes depicted as his daughter, and she created the Amazons, the race of warrior women. The next in the pantheon of Kobol is Hecate. She is the goddess and sorceress of the underworld and a shapeshifter. The hound and the dagger are symbols of hers. Originally to the ancient Greek pantheon, she was the goddess of necromancy, ghosts and crossroads, the last being an obvious metaphor for the passing of life into death. Her equivalent is trivia, and shrines of her were said to ward off spirits. In the province of Thrace, she was worshipped more for her connections to the crossroads than the whole bringer of death kind of thing. Thrace denouncing the titles of death. Seems familiar. And moving on to Aurora. The only one of the Kobol pantheon that we know of to use the name of a Roman origin. Her Greek counterpart would be Eos, goddess of the dawn. She was the sister to Helios and Selene, also called Sol and Luna, the sun and the moon. And lastly we have Asclepius, or Vejovis. He was the god of healing and could heal with a concoction made from the blood of a gorgon, and he carried a staff wrapped in a snake. In mythology, he was the son of Apollo and went on to sire five daughters. These children represented different aspects of healing. However, he was killed by Zeus, it's said, for delving beyond his purview. He attempted to resurrect the dead and was struck down for attempting to break the natural order. With the similarities between ancient pantheons and the lords of Kobol, it's likely that there are at least 12 gods, as that is the number of Olympians. And 12 is a number of importance to the Battlestar mythos, 12 colonies, 12 Cylons, and so on. There are references to other deities, including the Pegasus, a Mercury-class battle star, which could suggest the existence of the god Mercury, 
known to the Greeks as Hermes, the messenger, trickster, and ambassador to the gods. And finally, there is a reference to the one who must not be named, a tale of a jealous god who coveted the power of the others. Now you could think that this may be Hades, god of the underworld and often depicted as the bad guy in popular reimaginings, but classically Hades was much more indifferent. The description of a jealous god could perhaps fit better the mantle of Kronos, Zeus's father, who tried to consume his offspring so he would not be dethroned. There are a whole slew of similarities between the gods of ancient Greece and the lords of Kobol, but not only that, there are a startling number of parallels between the mythos and the characters of Battlestar, but that's a video I'd like to do separately as it's more speculation based. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see a follow up video, let me know. Also, any deities out there that could match the Jealous God description, or perhaps it's even the Cylons God, and perhaps he's responsible for the messengers that we see in the show. I love delving into the deep pseudo mythological lore, especially tales of gods and how they could be reimagined to be real. So, thanks for listening to this breakdown of the Eleven Lords of Kobol. I've been Rick. Thanks again, and goodbye.